Uh, so welcome everyone to uh, the second um, talk in the uh, Colors of COVID speaker series called That COVID Life or COVID Life. Um, so my name is Tiara Durham and I am the founder of Colors of COVID, uh, which is um, a platform designed to be a village for uh, communities of color to share their experiences uh, and voice their stories related to uh, the COVID pandemic and how um, the pandemic has affected them across many aspects of their lives. Uh, so today's topic is focused on uh, Philadelphia Black restaurants and restaurant owners as well as Black chefs in Philly. Um, and, and oftentimes that's a dual role. But um, I am excited to have a few guests with us here today. First, I'd like to uh, introduce Pamela Rich Wheeler, uh, who is the executive director at the Business Center. Um, and then we also have Malik Crosby, who is um, the owner of Meek's Treats. And, um, and, and Pamela's brought Ron Williford along to, um, to, to aid in, in the discussion uh, that we're talking about today. Uh, so I want to jump right in. What we'll do is just um, have a little bit of a dialogue around um, Malika's experience as a, as a restaurant owner. Um, and we'll also talk with Pam about some of the resources that are available in the Philadelphia area to support uh, restaurants and other businesses. So Malika, <laughs> would, you prefer, would you prefer that we call you Meek? Yes, you can definitely call me Meek. <laughs> All right. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I went first, okay. <laughs> um, I'm a little nervous, but uh, I did take some notes and things so that I can remember everything. Um, the pandemic has been, uh, took Meek Treats through a little ups and downs and some turns. Um, one, a lot of things that we struggle with was the first thing, and everybody can relate to this, is our staffing. Um, it was really hard trying to keep employees um, through the whole COVID because a lot of them were scared to work through it. Um, I hire a lot of the youth, so a lot of the parents pro um, prohibited their child from coming to work. Um, and then um, we like kind of went down on sales um, about 70% and like 30% gross within a month. So it was hard, you know, even trying to be able to make the bills, the inventory, and also keep the kids staff um, was some of the main things that we went through. And then um, once we got like a little deep into um, the COVID, it kind of forced us to kind of close for like four months because it was just extremely slow um, because we wasn't sure where things was going to go um, with the business. Um, around it and then we open back up and then here comes all looting and uh, you know and I just rent my building I'm not the owner there so my landlord says you know this is becoming dangerous you have to get a certain insurance now you know for the business so that became another cost um, but it was definitely mandatory we did experience a little bit of the looting but not too much we did like um, a lot of graffiti um, they tore up the block a little bit um, from Frankfurt Avenue coming down and then the bank area as well trying to like just vandalizing things um, so that was like you know something that took it and a lot of people didn't feel safe in the area at that time because we have um, a high population of like um, not the right people you know <laughs> in the area so it was just it was just like a um, a disaster um i did get a little help with getting supplies um, i had one a storefront kit with uh power up your business so they gave me um a lot of things to keep the products fresh to not break the seal um stuff to keep on the floor and different things like that but keeping up with the gloves um the price on the gloves went from 4.95 to $10.95 and $15 for a bottle of Lysol and all this stuff was mandatory because you know you have to keep the staff um, safe and also make them secure and also the customers because at Meat Treats everything is pretty much we put it out there but you serve yourself so we had to like um, 
cut the store off, <laughs> you know, and then grab the stuff for them. But we got to constantly have the clients and the customers want to see, you know, that you spraying your hand every time you open up the refrigerator, you wiping things down after every customer. So that got a little expensive as well. Um, just keeping everything together. Um, so, so Nick, let, let me, um, let's thank you. First of all, thank you. you sorry. Should. I know that was a lot. I'm so nervous. <laughs> no, no, I think it was an excellent overview and what I'd love to do is to be able to dig in certain parts of, um, of, of what you've experienced. Um, okay. so, so first of all, let's, you know, take a step back and just tell us a little bit about yourself and about your business. Tell us, tell us about Meek's Treats first so we know we have an image of, of the type of business that you're running. Okay, so Meek Treats is a business that is uh, dedicated to providing handmade, high-quality banana pudding. Um, we have over 13 different flavors, and along with selling the banana pudding, we have other desserts under our umbrella. We have milkshakes, quesadillas, pizza pretzels. Um, we do a lot of seasonal things, so we do like uh, holiday boxes for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, and so forth. Um, we don't carry all 13 flavors of the banana pudding in store as of right now, but we put them out seasonal. So we have like a, a, a sweet potato banana pudding that comes out, you know, in the fall and different things, eggnog for the new years and different things like that. I started the business in 2014. I didn't get the storefront until 2018. Um, most people know me from uh, being down just vending at different places. And I was down on 22nd street inside of a business called country cooking. And I received a lot of volume from there. And it made me just say, you know what, I can do this. And I went ahead and started looking for a storefront. And I actually inherited this um, place of business from a family member who had a store there originally. And they moved their store to South street and it became meat treats. And we've been rocking and rolling ever since. <laughs> awesome. So your, your business right now, the storefront is, is on South Street. No, my storefront is on, uh, is, I'm sorry, is at 1633 Orthodox Street, which is in the Frankfurt section. Okay. Yes. My, it was my cousin's store first. I was saying I inherited it and they moved on to South Street. Okay. So okay. I now have the, uh, the old building. All right. All right. So I want to make sure people know exactly where you are. We, we mm -hmm. already have some messages in the chat. <laughs> that you you're um you're certified uh, banana pudding, you know. Yes, my stuff yeah. banana pudding may give you a run for the money, but since I don't make it anymore, I'm definitely coming for yours. <laughs> yes, and I think the most I think the most impressive thing about meat treats is having 13 different flavors. So it's like something for everybody. We have flavors that's made without bananas. We have flavors that's made with different uh brands of different cookies and stuff like that. So people love it. We I'm actually like yeah, I might be yeah, the the oh. goat for <laughs> for Philadelphia oh. and banana pudding. <laughs> So, so thank you for sharing a little bit about uh, about um, your background and your business. And now, I do do I understand correctly? You have a storefront and you also have a food truck. I do. Mm -hmm. So I have a uh, fish truck, which is called Jam and Jays. So when I started the business. Um, as it started to get slow, people in the neighborhood kept asking for food. It wasn't really many places to eat food in Frankfurt. So I said, okay, well, let me think of stuff that we can do quick that the staff can handle and it's not too much. So we started making a fish sandwich. I have a great fish recipe and also a sauce recipe and I released it to the world. And the only bad thing about that is I was not zoned in meat treats to make fish sandwiches. So we got a lot of penalties and fines about it. So that went ahead and forced me to go ahead and grab the fish truck. So that way I can have an avenue just to do the fish and it won't compromise the business itself. So I learned that the hard way. But Jam and Jay's is... Um, is a fish truck. It's nice. We're not open right now because in January I had an accident where uh, somebody, I was working on a food truck. It was right outside my store and somebody had ran into the back of it. So I had suffered first, second and third degree burns down the left side of my leg. So mm -hmm. it kind of took me out the game to about February 28th, but we're getting it together now. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're feeling better and uh, sounds like your business is going to be back up and running. So, so now take me back to, you know, February, March, 2020, mm -hmm. um, and just give everyone a sense of like what a, the typical week was, was like before the shutdown and then what it was like after. 
Um, honestly, I I didn't even expect it to be, you know, as much as it had became. February is usually our, we have a great month in February because we have our Valentine's Day. So we sell in a bunch of chocolate covered strawberries and different things like that. And I believe we just got over uh, Valentine's Day. And the next week we, the staff is in there because I have more staff now because you know, we're, we made the money on Valentine's Day and we're, you know, we're working towards thing and it's like, okay, it's the COVID. We might not be able to come outside and, you know, and different things like that. And I'm like, hold up, wait, this is our, you know, this is our time. And literally it just dried up. It just really mm -hmm. just dried up. The sales went from maybe we can have like a margin of maybe like a $300, $400 a, a day to maybe like $76. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and when we prepare for the week, cause our store opened up on Tuesday through Saturday. So on Tuesdays, it's like Monday is my store day. Tuesday is the day where we, you know, fill the store to last for the week. If not, we have to replenish and we look forward to replenishing. And it was literally like, okay, we throw on a lot of stuff in the trash now, you mm -hmm. know, the wild berry isn't selling as much as the regular, mm -hmm. you know, because now the money has slowed up where customers wasn't able to come in and buy five and six at a time. You know, they was just coming and was able to treat themselves. It was maybe like, you know, just being able to have one or two because they, nobody was sure. And um, especially for the community that my business is in, we have uh, about maybe $10,000 in rotating food stamps, but not cash. So it was definitely like the, I had the cutoff with sales in the surrounding area. It just didn't make it for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, gl I'm glad you mentioned that because I was wondering, um, I read an article that talked about, you know, the biggest challenges that restaurant owners face, um, financial, um, managerial, which is staffing. Um, mm -hmm. There's the, uh, the food waste component. Um, and some oh, competition. So, so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, when, when the change came and your volume was reduced, did you have, did you have to lay off your staff or, um, how did, how did that work? Um, I'm trying to think of exactly what time was it? I think it was, I'm going to say about May. Um, where things started to, uh, where my staff had to start, you know, like, okay, we're going to see who's working which days now. We can't have two people here at one time because we're not making the money. And I actually mm -hmm. put myself on the schedule for a while because I didn't have the, you know, the help or the finances to be able to staff the whole crew. crew. So I think it was about May. And what that looked like for my staff was, okay, you know, school was out. I think there was pending to where they wasn't able to go into school anymore. And I'm thinking about my one staff, Nasir. He's been working with me since the beginning. And Nasir was like, oh, well, I think that we're about to have to, you know, they're not letting us in school or something. And we had to do um, different things with that. I'm sorry, I just received a phone call. And I was like, okay, Nasir, but you know, I need you here at the store, but is it okay if I can just pay you this until things pick back up and he was in agreement mm -hmm. with it but everybody else I kind of lost them and then had to rehire um we had we was in the um transformation stage of the business came the new year which was our goal was to be able to add more stuff to the um menu for meat treats so we were going to start something called meat treats arrangements because we do so well during the holidays so I actually hired people to do um chocolate covered strawberries and to do cake decorations and we started doing treat tables and different things like that so like I'm like in contract with um individuals and I'm like oh well I'm not we have to you know revisit this a little later because I'm not sure what it's going to be and it really just kind of like put a whole stop into everything mm -hmm. if I answered that correctly yes absolutely so so you know I, I just as much as you're willing to share like how how did that affect your ability to kind of sustain your own lifestyle like did you did you have savings set aside um so that you can could continue to um you know, to, to run the business as much as you could, as well as your family, or was there um, a shift in or a pivot in how, in how you ran the business? It was definitely a shift. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I actually had to, you know, call my grandfather mm -hmm. <laughs> and say, you know what, I don't think it's time for me to close the business, but, you know, I think we just need a little assistance now. And I ain't never mm -hmm. asked you for nothing, but, you know, today we need, you know, we need help with this. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna try to put my phone on do not disturb. I'm sorry. And I was like, you know, we actually need help with this. And he was willing and he was actually able to um, help me be able to get ahead with the um, with the rent at the store. Because that was my main thing, not having to make the money and still having to pay the bills. So I worked out something with my landlord and I was able to uh, get him the payments with the help of my grandfather. And I kind of just had to just like just take it easy. Mm -hmm. you know at home mm -hmm. with my son and once the pandemic started my son he got like super super paranoid so he was like we were no i think we lost her did we lose her i think we might have lost her it's just okay. hard to appear from my screen oh <laughs> it's, it's okay it's okay oh, man. um <laughs> but we know we know she'll be back soon but yeah. Um, I, I actually want to pivot to to Pam, if, you know, not to, to continue to use the word pivot because it's overused these days. Um, Pam, before before I, I get kind of your perspective on um, the impact that COVID's had on on black restaurants and uh, chefs, I just want to take a moment to uh, tell the audience a little bit about who you are um, and um, why why you're in such a great position to help. Uh, so, so Pamela uh, Rich Wheeler is a native of Philadelphia. She has an MBA in marketing and a Bachelor of Arts degree in business communications from the University of Pittsburgh. And she's also been recognized as a thought leader, change agent, and connector. Since 1999, Pamela has been serving as founder and executive director of the Business Center uh, for Entrepreneurship and Social Enterprise providing consulting, educational workshops, and business support services to serving adult and youth small businesses. The mission of the Business Center is to equip small businesses with the necessary tools to start, sustain, and expand their operations. And since 1999, the Center has provided small business workshop training, teaching small business owners how to design and implement uh, and fully capitalize a business plan. And to date, the program has served over a thousand clients. I know I hear um, a lot about the services that the Business Center provides, and it's, it's a, an awesome resource uh, for entrepreneurs in the Philadelphia area. Um, in addition, Pamela is also past president of the National Black MBA Association, Philadelphia chapter. Uh, she's been appointed to a number of boards, the Dance Institute of Philadelphia, Mount Airy Business Improvement District, Progress Investment Associates in the Philadelphia Chapter, National Black MBA Association Advisory Board based on her expertise in small business development and collaboration. She's received um, the Eastern Minority Supplier Development Council James Brown Award for serving as an advocate and visionary entrepreneur for business excellence and community leadership. Um, her, along with her husband, Solomon Wheeler, received the Outstanding Civic Service Award for the National Black MBA Association. Um, the Distinguished Leadership Award for her outstanding contribution to higher education and small, develop, small business development from Community College of Philadelphia. Um, she's received the Educator 500 Award for the innovative approach of the Business Center's Youth Entrepreneurship Program and the Youth and Money Camp for the from the Dean of the College of Education at Westchester's University Three Institute. Um, re relevance for exceptional contributions in economic and small business development from the Philadelphia chapter of the National Black MBA Association. Um, and she also served on a distinguished panel of women in leadership. Now, I will say alma mater, University of Pittsburgh, Katz Graduate School of Business. So, you know, Philly, uh, Pennsylvania has that whole um, uh, school spirit and, and, and sports spirit that takes everything to another level. So, you know, I'll let y'all do your shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes. And hey, um, let me just, let me just close Pamela. I, I think it's so important <laughs> that we, we recognize, um, the people that we have who, who come to speak of, uh, speak to us and all the great accomplishments that they have, because, um, 
first of all, I don't think we do it enough. And it's lovely when you have a long list of accomplishments to share um, because of the, the, the pillars that we have within the community, specifically the black community that we can lean on and use as resources. Uh, so, so thank you, uh, Pamela, for all that you've done for us in the community. And, um, and I'm ready to turn it over to you. I can, I can certainly, if you'd like to open uh, with something and then I have a few questions. Malika, thank you for joining us again. Um, I was just having a, um, a, allowing Pamela to share a little bit about um, the resources that she provides at the business center and then we'll come back to you. Okay. All right. All right. Well, first of all, thank you, Tierra, for reading the entire uh, by, bio. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm always sitting there like, whoa, you know, that's a lot of um, work over the years, all for the love of serving our entrepreneurs. And, you know, we, that's what we're here for. We're here to serve. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I not only wanted to bring myself, but I wanted to bring one of our consultants who's actually meeting one-on-one -on -one with the clients that we served in case there were any specific questions about what people need to bring to the table when they have meetings. And I, as I shared with you and Natalie earlier, um, these COVID relief um, meetings where we are assisting people in filling out their application, they're free. We're offering them as a free service. So we really encourage people um, to take advantage of that, um, there's a, so I, what I wanna do at this time is just mention a few opportunities and some things that are not even, even available yet, but are coming down the pipeline. Um, but before I do that, just to give you um, an overview of what we do at the Business Center, um, our, our mission is to equip businesses with the tools they need to start, sustain, and expand their operations. So we have, three core programs. We have our community, which is where we do webinars and we also um, do one day workshops. We offer, we're in the middle of a business plan course right now. Um, and then we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching and that's where we serve businesses that are already in business, but they may need some help with pricing or, or they may need some assistance like we're saying right now with filling out all these COVID relief forms or understanding what they qualify for, or, or maybe they just need their taxes done and brought up to date. We are now providing that um, service on us on a sliding scale. Um, and then we also have our youth entrepreneurship program, which we do as an in-school, after-school and summer program. Um, so we're, we're excited about that. So what people have been doing um, to, um, Malika mentioned earlier about her, her staff and just trying to maintain it. And that was really a big challenge for people at the beginning because um, people were getting such a, a, a robust amount of unemployment <laughs> and they were not being motivated to work. So that was, that was the first problem. So even if people applied for the PPP, which that is, was designed to keep your workers on the payroll. That's what, that's what it's, it's by design. Um, it was still challenging because people did not want to come back to work, which is really, really hard uh, to process. But um, they, they were looking at this opportunity, you know, first, no one wanted to be around anyone in the first place, right? So they were saying, this is um, enough for me to live off of right now. So you had that challenge at first. Um, but for the owners, the PPP was a re very good source. Um, it, it was a loan that actually turned into a grant. So if, if you did apply for the PPP, um, you now should be in the process of doing your loan forgiveness paperwork. And when something becomes loan forgiveness, that's when you know that it, or when they start using words like recover, recoverable loan, then that's when you know it's actually a, a grant or forgivable loan. Those kind of words mean you do not have to pay it back. Um, and now um, what we have in addition to that, there are some people that are eligible for a second draw. And that is um, 
also the PPP, and they can go back and um, ask for the same amount. Um, we recommend you go to the same um, banking source first, but if you cannot, yes, you can go to another source. Um, in addition to that, the idle loan is available to the end of the year for for-profits and non-profits. If you are a for-profit, it's a 3.75% um, interest rate. If you're non-profit, it's 2.75. And you do not have to pay a cent of it back until after 12 months. After 12 months, you have 30 years, 30 years to pay it back. Unbelievable, nothing, you know, this is unprecedented. So if you can figure out some way to you utilize these resources um, to maintain or to grow your business, um, we recommend that you do so because you're not, you're not going to see terms like this, um, you know, to come in the future at this, at this caliber. Um, in can addition- I, Can I just ask a clarifying question? Sure. So the PPP loans are de by design to keep people employed, right? Right. And that's um, potentially forgivable. Um, the the other loan that you mentioned, I don't. What was the name of the year, one? The idle loan, which is the emergency in in injury disaster loan, and okay. all these loans that I'm mentioning, all these um, COVID relief funds are on our website. So I thank Natalie for putting it in the chat um, because if you go to our website on the homepage, you can click on COVID relief funds and all of these are there and then some. And we'll actually be updating it tomorrow because I haven't even announced some things that aren't even out on the street yet, but um, you, I would like to share that information with um, those who are present today. Can I share I'm, something? I'm off the press. Okay. <laughs> sure, go ahead, Malika. So I'm glad you said that because that was something that I wanted to talk about as well. So um, I did receive one grant and uh, Tanya had helped me um, fill out for the grant. It was the Merchant Fund grant. And I right. received that it was for $5,000. This was back uh, last June. I think, and that was good. So that was, you know, that was to put us back in the game. Now, when PPP came out, I filled out for a PPP for Square because that's our merchant services. But um, I started doing business banking with Key Bank, and I have I've been denied every uh, PPP application. Um, SBA, I literally uh, Tanya um, helped us uh, fill out the whole application with everything and sent it when I had all the tools and everything I needed. Um, they said they were receiving too many applications from my from the address itself okay. for my business, so I didn't receive anything. And now it's hard because. I paid all my staff under the table, so I don't have a record of how I pay them. I have like I keep my own books for my um for my tax person, like our state fill out time cards still, but I pay them. Some of them get cash app, and we do Venmo, but it's not a payroll services. So that kind of like stopped me from like dealing with um people. I think it was like Great Vine. Uh, Blue Vine was one of the companies. Um, I tried to go through Square for PPP, but I don't have record of payroll. Okay, that is the biggest challenge. Um, and that is the biggest deterrent if you do not have um, documentation of your payroll um, or your financial statements. And Ron, I don't know if you wanna add anything, um, but that is, that is the main reason why we're offering um, bookkeeping and services that can get your payroll started or your, you know, your tax information in a format that will allow you to apply for things going forward if, if and where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, that because that's the biggest deterrent. But Ron, did you want to add something? Yeah, the, um, how's your business set up? Is it a uh, sole proprietorship, single member LLC? 
it's a single member LLC. Okay, so if you're a single member LLC, they're going to take a look at your Schedule C. Yes, I have a Schedule your, C. Okay, based on your Schedule C, you're eligible to apply. It doesn't it doesn't have anything with to do with payroll. So because of your Schedule C, you can't apply. And then what they're going to look at, they're going to look at your gross revenue. And then the portion where it says, what's your payroll? They're going to look at the draw. Whatever you take out of the business to pay yourself, that will be mm -hmm. considered the draw. So they're going to take the gross revenue, divide that by 12, do a multiple of 2.5 times that, and that's what the loan amount would be. Previously, if you had applied, they were looking at your net income. And what we're finding out is that the net income, everybody was zeroing out or they had negative returns. Because if you do your taxes, you don't want to pay taxes. So we started looking at your gross and then based on your gross, and if you're a single member LLC or a sole proprietor, employees have nothing to do with the equation. Okay, and, well, that would be definitely and, something I need help with. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for that correction, Ron, because I'm thinking she has employees, but she did say that she does not have employees. So you would not need to um, show your payroll in that case, or you, you know, your information from like an ADP or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, also, the sole proprietor piece changes everything. Even for that matter, if there are any individual contractors um, on this call, that changes the game too. You can apply if you are a contractor and it's just you. So thank you, um, thank you for that correction, Ron. And, and also, and, there's a there's been a unique website created by the IRS for just gig workers and folks that do that type of work. The um, right. so you know I don't I don't remember the um, link, but if you go on the IRS website and I guess if you Google. I don't have it available to me right now, but if you, you know, got in touch with this, I could provide it. But there's a whole list of information. If you drive Uber, if you're an independent contractor, those type of occupations, there's a list of information and resources to help you um, with your business and also some stuff that you can apply for. Now, here's another question. Um, is Malika eligible for the CHIRP program? Uh, yes, it, it, I mean, yeah. it's because they're accepting all types of businesses. So In I think the confusion was when they threw out the word payroll protection, most people thought I had to have a payroll. Right. But if let's say if you're set up as a S corporation and you actually do have payroll, that's a different equation. Right. That, but, that, that's what I'm referring to, because I'm, I'm thinking that she had when she said employees, but she did say that they were paid under the table and. Right. That it, everything. it all depends on your business structure. So right, right. based on your business structure, there's actually a plethora of stuff out there that you can actually be on the SBA that you can actually jump into the, as you say, the game and uh, get a, get a couple dollars in your pocket. Yeah. You can just show your gross receipts in that case. Um, so the CHIRP program, one thing I want to emphasize about that is that it does expire on Monday. So if you are um, considering applying for it, I would say, um, you know, contact our office tomorrow or no later than Monday. So if that is if you need assistance, but um, we do have that on our website as well. Um, which um, can is, you give me the website again? I'm sorry. Or it's T H E B I Z C T R dot com. And then if you say, for instance, if you start working on it this evening, and you run into, and you just want to, you just have specific questions about certain parts, you can email us and then um, we can address those, those questions that way. Cause it is, we are running out of time with CHIRP. Um, sometimes they give extensions on different programs. For instance, I want to mention that PPP, the, the deadline was March 31st. That has now been extended to May 31st or May, what it, May 30th, what's the last day in May? The last day in May. Do I have to sing the song 30 days? <laughs> May 31st. Go ahead, I'll May accompany 31st. you. <laughs> That's right. So, so, <laughs> yes, yeah, so those of you who didn't make the March 31st deadline, you now have until May 31st. So you can enjoy your weekend this this weekend and you know get back to, the, to that. 
um, on Monday. Um, Pam, I, I don't like to just mention with the church, if you have, it's an online application. If you have most of your information together, I'd recommend to go ahead and process the application, get it in the queue. And then and what is, okay. Pam, I, I don't, I don't, I, I was doing something else before I jumped out. I don't, I don't have, but if you call the business center, we can give you that. Yeah. And it's on our website. Malik. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I'm going to try to fill it out today. Yeah. Here's what I recommend is go in. Um, it's going to ask you for some of your income statements. If you have those mm -hmm. prepared, I'd recommend mm -hmm. do as much as you can on the application to the point of submitting it because it will be in the queue. And then what they're going to do is after the fifth, they will start. If something's missing, they'll reach out to you. So I'd recommend at least get your name in the, in the queue so that you can okay. get things processed. And one of the key elements is you have to explain why you need these funds. But okay. I always recommend get your name in there because there's mm -hmm. always a Q&A that's going to come about later. And if mm -hmm. you keep in fairly decent records, you know, submit that and they're just going to verify those records. So by getting it in by the 10th, you'll have enough time to adjust anything and make it, you know, agreeable to whatever you whatever you submitted so but but use that use this time to get things done that's what okay. i would recommend yeah and reach out to us you know um if you start the night and you get stuck i mean put us on speed dial in the morning and you know <laughs> i'll be accessible even on the weekend if you, if you need me yeah i appreciate that and also um the pa 30 day loan fund i don't know if you apply for that but that's a forgivable um loan um and i think you have to have been in business for a year would you fulfill that requirement you have to have at and, least three employees and between how many three you, employees you just one employee three, at least three yes well well right now um as we speak i have four employees they're all part-time but i have four employees okay so you may be eligible for that. That was actually set up by some local business owners, mm -hmm. such as uh, ShopRite um, and some other folks, the owner, um, Jeff mm -hmm. Brown. Um, so again, that's that's the PA 30 day. day. Fund. Yes. Yeah, and that does not expire until 2022. So you have plenty of time to, you know, look that over. That's on the... Um, that is on the phila.gov website as well. Um, as well as some other grant opportunities. So the city, they update their website. We have the city's website on our, on our website as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can click on there and then you'll see all the grants that they have. Click uh, phila.gov. Um, I was I had mentioned that there's something available for restaurants, or I said earlier I wanted to mention something that's coming out that's not even available yet, but it's coming. And that is um, going to be called the Restaurant Revitalization Grant. And the and this isn't this is actually being viewed by Congress right now. It's going to be available through the SBA. So it's not out yet, but as you put together your list of resources that you're tracking, put that on the list. Again, that's called the Restaurant Revitalization Grant. Um, it's, um, they're waiting to, to, to do a bill through Congress, so it, it's, not, it's not available yet. Um, what is also coming out, which isn't out yet, um, if there's any places on this call that had live entertainment and food, there's a, sh a shuttered venues um, grant coming out. Um, the deadline will be April 8th. There's going to be a webinar that will be done by LISC, L-I-S-C. This is not on our website yet, um, but we will be posting it on our website tomorrow because we just have we just learned about it. Um, again, that's for places that had live entertainment and food. 
you can get up to ten million dollars for one for each establishment. So you know, um, organizations that had theatrical performances that they're, they're really trying to target places like that or places like the Clef Club or on Broad Street. Um, they they teach music, but they have a live venue area, a big live venue area where they perform jazz. They want to see these places reopen. And of course, if they're open, then people, what do they want to do after the show? They want to go somewhere and eat something or have dessert. So this is very, very important to the restaurant industry that these places get opened up because they are natural feeders to the work that you all are doing with restaurant in the restaurant industry. Um, I think I don't have any other, other um, grants that I can mention at this time, but I hope that the ones that I did mention were helpful. And if there's any questions, I see a couple of faces now where I saw just names, <laughs> maybe some of the people, and somebody put something in the chat in reference to Comcast um, rise. What's the deadline for that? For the Comcast rise? Mark, you may be on mute. Oh, there you go. Hi, let me unmute. Um, yeah, I'm Mark. I work with Comcast business and uh, there's various waves of Comcast rise. You know, so there's various periods. So what I would encourage everyone to do is, you know, go on the site and see if you qualify and then apply as soon as you can. Okay. There's some real good potential resources. So they still have, they still have things open. Yes. They okay. Do it in, you know, I don't know what they call it, but they'll have various time periods. Okay. Where people right. can apply and be selected. And they're really putting some good resources into it. Okay. Really yep. the Mark, um, resources I work with, for example. I'm sorry, say that again? The, some of the communication resources, people I work with, you know, the, these are really skilled people that are being you know, involved in this. Thank you. Thank you're you. I know, I know someone who um, was able to take advantage of Comcast Rise and um, they did get uh, some media services as well as um, I think tech services. So um, I would definitely encourage people to, to check that out as well. And, and you could get some free promotional um, dollars uh, or not specifically dollars, but I think um, actual media dedicated to your, your business. Yeah, we actually had a, a restaurant owner who had that opportunity as well and he's um he's actually speaking at an event that we're holding next week and before we conclude i'd like to share that with everyone um but amazingly he has um been able to take advantage of everything <laughs> um a lot of other grant opportunities and he said it's really helping him because he was a um primarily catering business that had to pivot and become curbside um, business. One of the things that I also wanted to mention that we're trying to do to um, encourage restaurants to sort of get through this period, but serve a, no a number of folks um, per day, per week, is to look at the ghost restaurants um, model because you can still prep, you can still do a certain number of meals um, each day and you can locate yourself temporarily in hot spots. So that, that's just something to look at that model. Um, we actually have a restaurant owner who they have a regular location, but they set up a ghost kitchen in addition to their <laughs> regular location. And they said they're serving 50 platters per day at that location, you know? Which is which is really amazing. Yeah, that sounds like a good opportunity for partnerships too. Uh, you know, if you if you kind of have a ghost kitchen embedded in another another business that's complementary to the products you're offering, you know, like banana pudding could go with so many great things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. 
So um, thank you so much, um, Pam, for, for sharing all that great information. Um, a lot of dates, a lot of great opportunities to, to maximize um, you know, the, the funds that the government is offering. Sounds like some Philadelphia specific opportunities as well. If they have, if anyone has any questions, um, you can can reach the business center at www.phebizctr.com. Um, and um, is there a phone number that they should call or should they just go to the website, Pam? Um, they can call 215-247-2473. I want to share this flyer again before we adjourn. Um, and that also, they'll be able to see the information on there. Great, thank you. Um, so, so Meek, we, we didn't quite have an opportunity to, um, to finish our discussion, but I want to turn, turn uh, your attention to some of the ways that the, um, the audience members can support you. So if what are the top three ways that the people listening today can support you. Come past the store, 1633 Orthodox Street. Pick up a banana pudding or two. Um, we're, our website is under construction right now. We're not doing any shipping because uh, it's really, really expensive. And because of the um, pandemic and all the packages being backed up, we don't want to chance our uh, packages not getting there in a timely manner. So we have, we're actually on Uber Eats and Grubhub as well. And we just it's, thank you for the resources. Definitely, I took my notes right here. I'm going to jump on the uh, Business Center Tonight website and fill out for the short program. I'm going to check out Comcast Rise, uh, the 30 day fund, and um, get my information together to get ready for my PPP. So that way I can have yeah. my staff, because I'm telling you, nothing is going to make me more happier than being able to have a payroll system, because it will just change my life in the business in so many different ways, because it'll make it easier for my accountant and also a less headache for myself getting things in order. And I want to go back and revisit the uh, our previous goal before the whole pandemic about being able to hire people who um, actually specialize in the chocolate decorating and the cake decorating so that we can gather more sales, more big ticket items as well. Mm -hmm. Is there um, a phone number where we can reach you also? Um, yes, we have our Y'all got to kill me. We have our business phone number. I just switched it uh, because I have won the Google um, storefront kit. So Google sent me um, all the essentials for uh, for the business and everything. So we have a new Google number that's going to pair up with um, the website and also being able to order on Google, but it's pending. So I don't have it. Right so, now. so what about the email address? Maybe. Yes, the, the uh, email address is meat treats, A Y P M, and that's abbreviation for are you putting me at gmail.com. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, have you, um, do you offer gift cards at all? I know that one yes, of the ways we, do. we offer um, gift cards through Square, and we also have a loyalty program at our store. So when you come in, you become a customer, you're enrolled in our loyalty program. When you come five times, you get a free banana pudding. And I always put out updates of, you know, reminders hey, it's been a while, come check us out, new flavors, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. And what are your hours? Um, we're Tuesday through Saturday, 12 to 7 p.m. Okay. And the social media is meat treats underscore. Okay. okay. Instagram, Twitter, all of the above. Yeah, all the same uh, information, Facebook as well. Right. Okay. Well, I know that we have just a, a few minutes left, so I do want to just give a quick opportunity if there are any uh, questions in the audience feel free to come off mute and, and ask your question or feel free to type uh, your question in the chat um, but while we're waiting for any questions that might come in I just want to um, do my shameless plug for Colors of COVID um, so again Colors of COVID is really a, a platform for communities of color to voice and share their experiences 
um, with COVID-19 or how the pandemic has affected them. Um, you can you know, find us at colorsofcovid.org. Uh, we're on all the social media platforms, Twitter, well, except TikTok. TikTok, I'm not ready for TikTok, but um, Twitter, um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, you can find us there. Um, this is uh, the start of a speaker series called That Kobe Life. Uh, last week was about Black arts and culture and what we can do to support Black arts and culture in Philadelphia. Um, the next session will be in uh, later in April, and it will be focused on mothers and children and how COVID has impacted them. Um, so I'm a mother, I have a six-year-old, and on any given day, I have a different way that I would describe <laughs> how <laughs> COVID has affected me and my child. Um, so I would definitely suggest you tune into that. Uh, we'll have a, a, a MD, a medical doctor um, that will be joining us for that discussion. Um, and so I'll just ask once, one more time, if, if there are any questions, feel free to come off mute and ask your question. Okay, no mute. Um, and I know that we have someone, um, Jonathan, I don't know if you have the ability to come off mute. I think you said that you might have some resources to share. Um, I'll just say, if you're able to come off mute or, or type those in the chat, feel free to do that. Um, but wanna thank everyone. Uh, Pamela, I wanna thank you so much uh, for coming and sharing uh, information around the business center, both you and Ron. And um, Malika, thank you so much for telling us your story your, your Kobe life story um, so that we, we can understand the impact that it's having to our, uh, to our communities and, and, and understand ways that we can support you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I thank you guys for listening. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, can I share the flyer before we adjourn? Yes, let me, I saw Jonathan's off of mute. Okay. Let me know if you have a comment, Jonathan. Okay, maybe not. All right, go ahead and share your flyer, Pina. Okay, can everyone see it? Not okay. yet, it's moving. Okay. Um, yeah, can see it. All right, great. So I just wanted to share this quickly. This is a free um, workshop we're doing next Thursday. And um, I think it speaks to this um, workshop today um, and gives you an opportunity to learn more about the COVID relief funds and then we're going to talk about loans, taxes, and financial support. Um, Ron will be one of the speakers on the panel, our tax specialist, and he's also a financial advisor with his own company. And then um, David Sims will from Eatable Delights, who's also a caterer and has a physical location. We'll talk about not managing tax as well, and then reaping the benefits of making that change. So again, that'll be April 8th from 1 to 2.30, and it's free. And you Thank can go you. to our website. It'll be on the homepage. Thank you so much, Pam. Uh, Jonathan, I know you're in motion, so just um, give me a thumbs up or down if you want to chat. Um, he did. Yeah, I can. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, I Jonathan. I can say hello. Sorry, I was on the train and uh, in and out of connection. So I'm John Deutsch from the Drexel Food Lab. Um, we do culinary product development, menu development, um, can help with some of the food science stuff. So if we can be helpful, we're happy to be. Um, we're busy, so you know we're not we're not doing this for sort of uh, business development. We we just want to be helpful, and uh, especially during these times, have been helping, especially a lot of restaurants get into packaged food and. CPG and bottling things. So um, I put my email in the chat. If anyone um, has need for us, we're around. And uh, if not, I, I look forward to being a customer. Thank you so much, John. I, I think that's an awesome thing. I mean, if, if you're trying to pivot and transition into um, preserving food for longer periods of time, it sounds like you might be able to help with that from a packaging perspective. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to help. Awesome, thank you. So we have just one minute left. And again, I wanna thank the audience for joining us today. Um, such a wonderful topic to understand how we can support each other. I look forward to seeing everyone um, at our next uh, topic speaker series, which will be uh, mothers and children and how COVID uh, and the pandemic is impacting them. 
So thank you everyone and have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good thank evening. You.